In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this hologram effect using Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So before we jump into After Effects and begin with the editing process, we first need to get two video clips. First of all, we need to put your camera onto a tripod, put all the settings into manual mode, make sure your lighting is consistent and doesn't change, and then you just want to record a shot of yourself against your background. Now, once you've captured a few seconds of that, you just want to go ahead, jump out of the shot and record the empty frame. So this is your clean plate and you need this in order to do the hologram effect. You'll see why when we jump into Adobe After Effects. So now that you've got those two video clips, you just want to drop them into Adobe After Effects and begin with the editing process. Let's get into it. So we're inside of Adobe After Effects and we've got our two video clips imported. You can see we've got our hologram effect and this is me in the foreground just chatting away. And then if we turn this layer off, you can see we've got the clean plate. So the two shots are completely identical. It's just one I'm missing from. So essentially what we need to do here is we need to remove the subject. I need to remove myself from this video layer to have a transparent background. And then we'll drop that layer on top of our clean plate in order to do the hologram effect. So in order to do that, we're going to go all the way to the beginning. And I'm just going to pull this section over here. So I only want to analyze the first two seconds just for speed. And then we'll just go into the roto brush icon up here. So roto brush tool, click that, double click on this layer here. And as you can see, it's loaded up this layer in this new tab here. So if you want to go back to the composition, you select comp one, or you can go onto the layer hologram. And as you can see, we've got this green brush. So the green brush is basically going to paint what's going to be left in. And then if you hold option, if you're on Mac, then it's going to turn red. And if you turn it red and you paint over something, then this part of the image will be removed. So you just want to paint green over the subject. So you want to keep the subject. So keep that green. There you go. You can see it's not quite perfect up here. It's blending in with this black background. So we'll go option, delete this. And as you can see, that pink outline is now surrounding the subject. Of course, if it's not quite working for you, then just zoom in. You can change the size of your brush by going over to brushes and changing the diameter. If you want, you can change the angle of this. It's completely up to you, but make sure this outline is perfectly sitting around your subject like this. And then you just want to make sure that this gray bar here, so this one underneath is filling up the entire composition. So if it's only set for these few frames over here, then only these few frames will be analyzed. And that means it will only work for those specific frames. So make sure that spans the entire workflow. Now, one more tip in this relates to your hair. It's a bit difficult to key out or roto out hair. But if you go back up to the roto brush icon, you go into the refine edge tool. You can just paint over your hair. So as you can see, I'm just painting this rough outline around the edge of my hair, and that is going to create this mask here. So you can see the white is the hair, the black is the background, which means the white is going to be included within the roto and the black will be removed. So if you've got frizzy hair or if you've got flyaway hair, then this is a really useful way of keeping in that information in the roto. So once you've done that, you just want to go ahead and press play. And that is going to let After Effects just analyze the footage. So as you can see, it's going to work frame by frame and it's going to slowly cut out the subject from the background. Now, if we just pause this, you can see down here, we've got these different options. So we've got the toggle alpha. And as you can see, it's going to show you an extreme example of what's being left and what's being removed. So the white will stay and the black will be removed. We'll go over to the next section and this is what you saw before. So this is the toggle alpha boundary. We'll go over again and we've got this and you can change the color of this by going over to the next box. So we can change this from red to blue. So now you can see a more accurate representation of what's going to be left in the image. Of course, if that's not clear enough, you can always increase the transparency of that and then continue analyzing forward. And as you can see, you can now clearly see what's being left and what's being deleted from this video. This makes it really easy to see if After Effects messes up a little bit and the rotor goes wrong and it chops off your arm or removes part of your hair. As you can see up here, it's starting to cut into my hair a little bit. But for this specific effect, it doesn't matter too much because we're adding some distortion later on. But just try and get it to roughly 90% there. So there you go. I've analyzed my two seconds. So I'm just going to go back to composition comp one. And if we solo this layer, you'll see that we've now got this subject. I've got myself on a transparent background. And if I toggle the transparency grid, you can see that in full effect. 
So we've got our subject on their own individual layer and then we've got the clean plate. So essentially we've got the two assets. As you can see, if I move this, I've got the two assets on their own layers, which means we can now control the subject layer and add this hologram effect. So first of all, we're just going to decrease the opacity. So press T on the keyboard to load opacity and pull the opacity down. Let's go to around 70, 75%. So instantly that's starting to look good. Now we'll go over to the right and go into effects and presets. And if you can't see effects and presets, then you just want to go into window and select effects and presets. Now we're just going to go into effects and presets and search for curves, drop curves onto the solo layer. And now in your curves, you can see we can affect different channels. So we've got channel RGB and that's all of the channels. So we'll just increase the highlights a bit. We'll go into blue. We'll increase the highlights on the blue. And then we'll also increase the shadows on the blue as well. So as you can see, we're getting that blue tone that you would see in a hologram. Now we're going to go ahead and search for glow, drop glow onto the hologram layer. And as you can see, we've got this horrendous effect applied. So let's adjust a few of these settings. So we've got glow threshold. As you can see, pulling this down will increase that and pulling that up is going to decrease the intensity of that. So pull that up to around 70 or so. Then we're going to increase the glow radius and then we'll go glow intensity. So we can pull this down to make that less intense or pull it up to make that even more intense. It's completely up to you. If we pull this all the way up and then increase the glow radius, you can see that's starting to look a bit better. Pull the threshold down just a bit. And then you can composite this on top behind or non. So if we put this on top, that is how that looks. If we put this behind, that is how that looks. And then we can put non. I'm going to put this on top because I feel like it looks better with the subject on top of the glow because it's adding this nice glow effect. As you can see, if we solo this layer and turn the transparency grid off, you can see this is starting to look really cool. So we'll uncheck that. And then of course you can go ahead and adjust any of the settings here. It's completely up to you, but I'm going to move on and I'm going to go into the distort folder. So we'll go down into distort. And as you can see, you've got all of these different effects here. And essentially what we're doing here is we're adding some distortion. So any of these specific effects will probably work and give you a really cool effect. But I really like the look of wave warp. So we'll drop that onto the hologram layer. And as you can see at the moment, it doesn't look great. And that's because the wave type is set to sign. We'll change this to square and that looks a bit more digital. Now we'll change the direction of this to horizontal. So we'll go to zero. And as you can see, it's cutting across horizontally. We increase the wave height. It's going to cut it like this. And if we increase the wave width, it will cut it like this. So once you've found a number that you're happy with, we're just going to travel down to phase. And as you can see, if I turn the phase wheel, it's going to animate this over time. So we're just going to create that with some keyframe animation. So we'll go to the beginning, create a brand new keyframe on phase by pressing that stopwatch icon. We'll move a few seconds over and we'll pull this wheel around a few times. And now if we play this back, you can see that looks really awesome. Of course, we've got a lot going on on this specific layer, so feel free to solo that if you want to make this quicker. Now that looks really awesome, but the problem is these bars are still a little bit too wide for my liking. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change the wave height down a little bit. We're going to pull it up to around, let's go to around four. I think that looks really cool. So as you can see, we're starting to get this distortion happening onto this layer. Of course, you can add some keyframe animation onto the wave height as well if you wanted to add more of this flickering effect. So we'll go wave height, go to the very beginning, create a brand new keyframe on four. Then we'll go a few frames over, we'll change this to a negative number. So let's go negative four. Then we'll go into effects, wave warp, go to the wave height. We'll copy those two keyframes, move over and paste those. And we'll just keep repeating this process. So essentially we've just created this loop. As you can see, we've got this nice glitching pulsing effect on this layer now, and that's starting to look a bit more like a hologram. Of course, though, if it's not blue enough for you, if there's not enough of a tint there, then feel free to go ahead and change that by searching for tint, drop tint onto that layer. Then we'll go over to the tint section over here. We can map the black to a dark blue. Then we can map the white to a light blue somewhere around here. 
and that looks really cool. Of course, you can always change the amount to tint down to blend that a bit more. And then we can go into levels, drop levels onto that layer, and we can just go ahead and add some contrast onto that layer. So we'll increase the input black, we'll decrease the input white, so somewhere around there. And that looks really awesome. Of course, as well as animating this glitching effect, you can also animate the opacity of this over time. So it sort of pulses. So we'll press T on the keyboard to load opacity. Create a brand new keyframe at the beginning at 74. Move over, pull this down a bit, move over again, pull this up a bit. Or alternatively, rather than doing this, rather than doing the keyframe animation, you can create a wiggle expression. So we'll just delete those. We're going to hold Option on the keyboard, select the stopwatch icon on opacity, and that's going to load at the expression window. Now we're just going to delete that. Then we're going to go wiggle. We'll go open bracket, one, mm, 10, comma, 50, and then just click out of that. Now, if we play this back, you can see we've got this flicking effect on the opacity. Of course, if that's a little bit too intense for you though, then feel free to pull those numbers down. So we'll go back into that expression. We'll pull the first one down to five, the second one down to 30. And that looks a lot nicer. The great news about expressions is it saves you the time and the hassle of having to deal with copying and pasting keyframes over and over again. And the good thing with expressions as well is they're completely random, which means you're not going to see a pattern of keyframes copied and pasted over time every second of the animation is going to look a little bit different and that flicker is going to look different every time. So let's play that back. That is really starting to look really cool. Now there's one more thing that we need to add onto this and that is just a glow. So as you can see, there is a glow on the subject, but there's no glow on the surrounding area. If this hologram was there in real life, there'd be light cast on the back wall. There'd be light cast back here on the table. So that is what we need to recreate. So we're gonna go layer, new solid we're going to change the color of this to a light blue somewhere around here press ok we're going to increase the size of this then we'll turn the layer off go into the pen tool and we're just going to draw a mask around the center of the frame so around here of course i've got a black background and it wouldn't spill onto black as much as it would do onto the white so i'm not going to have that on the black just have that around there. Then we'll drag this underneath the hologram layer, turn that back on. We'll go into masks, mask one, increase the mask feather. So we'll increase it all the way up to around there. Then we're going to pull the opacity down. So we'll pull it down a little bit. So somewhere around here. And that looks a lot better. Of course, you can always add the wiggle expression onto the opacity as well. So let's pull the, let's go T. To load up opacity, we'll go option, click the stopwatch icon again, and then we're going to copy that same expression. So wiggle, open bracket, five comma, 30, close bracket, and then exit out of that. And that is going to flick as well. But there you go. Of course, there's many different effects that you can add to this to take that to the next level. But that is the basics of how to create this awesome hologram effect inside of Adobe After Effects. So there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.